Hi everyone, I'm Charlene Habermeyer of Good Parenting Brighter Children, and this is Tidbits of Wisdom for Parents. Today I want to talk about supporting your musical community. And that would include, I want you to think back on, you know, if you've taken your child to a musical or to a play or to witness an orchestra or a chamber orchestra or the ballet or maybe it's, um, maybe even it's opera or maybe it's country western music. Have you taken your kids to any of those things and exposed them to any of those things? The only way that we're going to continue to have a musical community is if we as parents get our kids involved and pass that legacy down to them and take them to those different things so that they can understand how important they are for their cultural development. Now, there's a, several different things. First of all, you can look in your community. There's in every community there are usually free types of or, you know things that you can take your kids to, even if it's the high school, to go and hear the band at the high school or the orchestra at the high school or the jazz band at the high school. Take your kids to as many free things. Or there's a lot of things that are reduced fees, particularly for children under a certain age, and take your children to those things. Maybe make it so that, you know, if there are more expensive things, you're going to have to, you know, save up for that. But the one thing that I used to do is the grandparents, when they asked what they could give to my kids for, you know, like for birthdays or any kind of holiday, I would always say, look, there's this particular thing that we're saving for that we want to take them to. If you'd like to contribute the money for that, that would be perfect. That'd be wonderful. Include that in your card that that's where the money is to go for. And that's what we'll do. We actually started our kids, there was a series that uh, by nearby that was at a community college. They had four different concerts for kids up to age 12. So starting at age three, we enrolled our kids and four Saturdays out of the year, we took our kids to enjoy these different, there were all different kinds of things that we took them to. There was music and there were plays and it was musicals and it was fun. I remember Greg and Steve, uh, they were a duo who sang all kinds of fun children's music. Uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, my little granddaughter just recently turned three and she says, I'm taking the money that you're giving to her and there's a Dr. Seuss play that I wanna take her to. So grandparents, be involved. You, know, you wanna help to contribute to those so that your grandchildren can be exposed to those cultural things. Now, when you're taking them to something, what you want to do is you want to prepare them for it. If there's going to be any music involved, then get the CD or take them online and let them hear the CD and let them listen to this often, uh, several times. So kids like the familiar. They're just like us. We like to go to things that we're familiar with and so have them listen to the music. If there's a story involved, like if it's the Nutcracker Ballet or if it's uh, a Christmas Carol or whatever it is in terms of a play or a musical or a ballet or whatever it is, tell them the story, get a book from the library, go through the story so that they're real familiar with the story and they're real familiar with the music. The other thing that you want to do is to have the attire. You know, don't go in cutoffs and shorts and, you know, your smelly t-shirt or something like that. You know, those people that you're coming to see, they put in a lot of hard hours and work to present something that's going to be phenomenal for you and for your kids. And so show a little respect by what you're wearing. It's always kind of fun to dress up a little bit. You don't have to dress up to the nines, but to dress up a little bit and to go there and to make it a really special occasion. Afterwards, then go someplace, take your kids either to dinner or to lunch or to get an ice cream or something. And when you take them to those places, then talk to them. What did they experience? What did they like best? What was the biggest thing that they're always going to remember? Okay, so those are different kinds of things in different ways. Um, a Christmas carol is one thing that we took our kids to every year, and then the drive home was an hour and a half. It was a long ways, and so we used to talk about all the different things about a Christmas carol on the way home, of the things that they liked and didn't like. We took them to that every single year to the point where it was at the same place where our kids memorized. They had a lot of the lines memorized, which they thought were pretty funny, and we would talk about those on the way. So let me give you a bonus fact. If you are doing these things for your kids on a regular basis throughout the time that they are living at home, you are passing on an important legacy that they will pass to the next generation. It's been a proven fact. There are studies done that show that when grandparents and great-grandparents 
for me, it goes back to great great grandparents that were involved and interested in music and giving music to their children and music lessons, but also taking them to to hear an orchestra, to hear an opera. It was my grandmother who took me to my first opera. It was Tunhauser, which was by Richard Wagner. Okay, Tunhauser is a little bit over the top for a child, that, you know, for their very first opera. I think in the first 15 minutes, half the cast was killed. And I was sitting, it was an outside, I remember the whole production was outside, and I was sitting on this metal chair that was horribly uncomfortable, and I was probably about nine years old. But with the thing that I remember, there's actually two things. I remember the costumes. They are absolutely spectacular. And I remember watching my grandmother she was totally enwrapped. You could tell that she loved it. And I loved this grandmother. She was my paternal grandmother. And because she loved it, then I wanted to love opera. When I got married, my husband and I went to a number of different uh, series that four times a year there were operas that we went to. What motivated me? It was the legacy of what my grandmother passed down to me of her love of opera. On my other side of the family, I have great-grandparents great who played the mandolin, who played different instruments in Germany, and who passed that love of those instruments, and also uh, supporting the musical community and taking their children to see an orchestra, to see a chamber orchestra, to see a play, to see a musical, to see a ballet. And that was passed from generation to generation to me, and then I passed it to my children, and now my children are passing it to my grandchildren. Think about something that you love as a parent that you want to pass down to your children as a legacy, and maybe it will be supporting something in the musical community that will help to build their cultural awareness, support the community, and will pass down another legacy. Thank you for joining me, and I'll see you tomorrow. If you want to subscribe, you can push the button and subscribe, and there will be a little bell. You can push that, and it will send you notifications on each time that I post a new um, YouTube video. Thank you.